It's just before dawn. Thursday out here, very close to Tuckerton. This is uh, the Bass River. And where I'm standing uh, is a road called a Massa Landing. Uh, and hopefully this video will explain what I'm doing out here, why I keep coming back here year after year, trying to chase some magic that uh, may or may not ever happen again. Uh, but it's worth it. It's just a beautiful spot. It's changed a little bit over the years. And I've got my camera set up right now. Um, kind of in a bracketing mode. Looking to do five exposures, a little underexposed, a little overexposed, just to give myself some leeway. Uh, luckily, I uh, still got a little bit of time before the sun comes up. So one of the reasons I love coming back to this spot is one of my absolute favorite sunrise photos I ever, I ever took uh, over the last eight years was right out here. Um, the location looked a lot different back then. This, this, uh, this whole scenario here with this dock and these benches and these poles um, and that gate and that whole line up up there um, just along before this house. None of this was here five years ago, let alone eight when I accidentally took uh, one of my favorite morning pictures, a uh, series of photos. Took about, I don't know, 30 or so shots. Um, and this is uh, this is the gear right now I'm, I'm working with. So this is my, uh, my uh, Nikon mirrorless uh, Z5 with um, the 24 to 70 kit uh, lens, kind of. This is the F4 24 to 70. I do have a wider lens in my bag, um, but to be totally honest, yeah, I, I found myself using the wider lens, the, the 20 millimeter, uh, less and less. I just kind of don't want to go that ultra wide unless it's absolutely calling for it, you know? Um, really happy with just shooting a 24 or even 28 which was what my older lens uh, was the equivalent of a 28 so let me loosen up this guy so i could tilt this guy again there we go and uh that looks okay one two three four five there we go try that one more time So it's gonna do a little countdown. And then fire the shots. Anyhow, here are my photos. Um, uh, they're in groups of five, uh, followed by this yellow, um, this yellow flag, as Lightroom calls it. Uh, that's uh, my sixth shot, which was created by doing a little HDR. Uh, so if you want to take a quick look at how I put that together, I'm pretty much just selecting the five shots. Uh, these are all, uh, you know, follow, these are basically like um, minus two EV, uh, minus one, the regular shot, plus one EV, plus two. So a little bit of underexposure, a little bit of over. I'm um, right clicking, going to go into edit, uh, photo merge HDR. And then that will just align them uh, and start with some settings as a takeoff point, um, which are usually actually not bad, and uh, and create um, an HDR. Now, HDR has kind of gotten a bad name uh, or it's very uncool. It, it's kind of, I call it like the Phil Collins effect. Uh, there was a time when Phil was cool. There was a time when Phil was really uncool to say you liked Phil Collins uh, or even just Genesis, uh, Phil Collins era Genesis. And who knows, I'm gonna just rely on the fact that maybe HDR will be cool again, but these are the sort of the days, these are the don't like Phil Collins days. Uh, anyhow, yeah, HDR kind of got a bad name. Um, to, to be honest, it's really not necessary to do this stuff anymore. Uh, the camera dynamic range is so high um, that you're kind of able to do this 
um, without it, but I don't know. I just like doing it. I, I got started using a D200, which had 10 megapixels and not the greatest dynamic range. And when I was able to bracket a couple of shots uh, and then put it together using back then uh, the original version of the Nick collection, HDR Pro, uh, I was pretty amazed. And 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 I some of my favorite shots from them were uh, were so-called HDR merges, essentially just taking you know, the underexposed and the overexposed and putting them together. And as you can kind of see, um, you know, this is a lot brighter than that one. And this is a lot more balanced than the brightest one. So it's just kind of bringing the brighter areas uh, into the shadows. Um, and yet at the same time, it's controlling the blown out areas uh, by analyzing the darker stuff. So yeah, that's what I did. I basically merged in, in that Lightroom a bunch of shots, and those are the ones I flagged in yellow. So if I go to those, uh, those rated shots, these are all my HDRs. Uh, this was one I may come back to. I just really like the simplicity of it. Um, there's something, I don't know, kind of reminds me, I, I you know, of... Uh, of a weather report album cover or something, you know, I just need a little, a little, um, evening star here or something, uh, or a crescent moon that would probably complete it. Uh, but yeah, I kind of dig the, um, dig. I kind of like, I think I've been listening to the let it be album a lot with the, I dig a pony. Um, I kind of like the shot, but, um, but I really wouldn't do much to it. I kind of like it the way it is. Uh, so instead I kind of worked on, where's my five star guy here? Uh, is that it? Let's see. There we go. This is it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is the, um, this is the shot, uh, without any extra effects to it. So, um, you know, I, I was intrigued by what I had here. So I started with this new selection tool called add sky. Uh, really, really cool. So what's going on is on your selection stuff over here on the top, right? Um, there's a new feature now um, where I can click on a button and just literally click on select sky. Really neat. So that's what was done on this first edit. And um, yeah, pretty cool. So that's that's my sky selection. So it, it knew to find the sky. Uh, and then I basically adjusted that. So one of the things I did to adjust the sky, other than the typical, like maybe... Uh, as if I was using a variable and D filter or, or, a new, or a grad filter. I darkened it down a little bit to give some more detail in the clouds, but I also adjusted the temperature a little bit, kind of warmed it up just a little. Um, and then I added another um, mask. Again, this is new to Lightroom, these, these add mask features. Uh, and I chose add sky, but this time I inverted it, you know, so that's my second one. Um, and here we go. Here's my invert. So yeah, so now I have everything else. So so here's where I did uh, go through a couple of adjustments. I was trying out the exposure, trying out the dehaze, um, of course, playing around with the clarity. Wasn't sure if I liked it sharper, sharper or smoother as if it was a long exposure. Obviously ch checked out the, uh, the shadows adjustment. Uh, and once again, went into the temperature. So, so as you can kind of see right now, um, the photo's definitely getting, um, it's getting brighter without a doubt, <laughs> you know, uh, it's a much, much brighter photo right now. And, um, yeah, just going back, this was the original. And then this is with that new, uh, that new, um, adjustment to, to brighten it, uh, brighten up the, uh, the exposure with, the. Uh, with this, with the shadows here. So lastly, I kind of checked out what was interesting. Again, these are two completely new features. Um, this is to add a mask um, using either color or luminance range, uh, all typical Photoshop stuff. Uh, so I did go ahead and um, updated and tried out the mask uh, for color. And, and again, just to see the mask here, um, kind of like, I don't know if you, is that going to, bring that back up. Yeah. So, so what's up in red is, is the one that, uh, that I chose and it's really the good to just be these areas in red here that were, that were uh, going to be affected by, um, the adjustments. So I also on that one, you know, um, 
adjusted the temperature. I warmed this up. I um, What also really helped is I, I actually overexposed just that mask a little bit more. Um, so, so yeah, kind of cool. Uh, the color range effect, you know. Um, really, really enjoying that. So again, what's in red right now is not my adjustment. That's just what's going to be affected by my edits. All this stuff in here is what's going to be affected by my edits. So I, I actually brightened it up. I adjusted the color, adjusted the temperature. And now that part of the image it has a certain glow to it. You know, it, it's a brighter and it's, uh, it's warmer. So again, going back to where this started, you know, that was all in the shadows. The sky was a little bit overexposed. Um, and lastly, I just kind of put a crop on it. So, so reduce, the, reduce this back down to more of a wide angle uh, kind of effect. I'm really kind of happy with this one. Um, one last thing I might want to do is just to recap. So uh, I've been going back to this location quite often. Um, I, uh, I also use this same location as my Facebook um, you know, a background image. So again, back then, eight years ago, there were these remnants of pilings, uh, which were really, really cool. They were kind of, uh, so if I can go find a better angle where you might see where those pilings were. Um, probably, yeah, probably like right there. So, so that's what it looked like previously. I don't know you guys can see that. And, um, and if I bring up my maps here, um, Let's go to a Massa, and there we go, Massa Landing. Um, so that's where it is. Um, let me bring this up a little bit more. Um, just to recap, it's very, very close to um, to, to to the wildlife reserve. So, so eight years ago, um, what I had planned to do was leave the island down here and get on the parkway uh, and there's an exit around here um, I believe it's exit 44 you know and I and head into the the wildlife reserve you know so that was my original plan take the parkway go to the wildlife reserve it's probably the exit right here I missed it I missed the exit so I'm like okay well nope you know whatever uh, it's still pre sunrise and I remembered at the next uh, at this exit up here that there had been a road I was always curious about you know where does this road go this a mass of landing so I pulled off at this exit here for a mass of landing and sure enough uh, that's when I managed to get um, a series of shots that uh, I still go back to all the time um, and that's the one that I try to just see, can I get that magic again? And and that's um, you know, I don't know if it's good or bad or is it, but I have not ever gotten that magic again. Like I've never seen the light and the mist uh, and the clouds, especially, are another huge, huge ingredient uh, come back. But again, if I scroll down here to 2013 uh, and go to 1028, a massive landing. Yeah, these were the original shots. So these were the original bracketed shots. And look at that mist. Look at this mist coming off the water there. Uh, these were those really interesting pilings, which are all gone. Uh, and, and I really like the rocks, too, which are, have disappeared completely as well. Once they, uh, they re, you know, um, they updated the site, basically, to make it easier for people bringing in their boats. Because hence the word landing. It's an it's a ideal place to, to take your boat onto the Bass River. Um, but, yeah, this was just me getting started eight years ago, finding a little bit of the composition, moving around a little bit. Uh, the mist was absolutely the most intense when I just started that early that morning. The sun was just barely coming up over the sky. Had enough interesting clouds, especially the direction of the clouds. Uh, I really love that they were kind of pointing you back into the photo. Um, and, yeah, just was able to go through and uh, and enjoy um, what was, again, a, sh um, a shoot that I always thought was pretty good, but I've since gone back to and uh, appreciated as being one of my absolute favorites. Now, I've gone ahead and post-processed these um, a lot, uh, but even th this is straight out of camera. You know, this shot is straight out of camera, and, and I just loved the compositional options of this, uh, of this uh, you know, this derelict, 
what I suppose at one time was a, a, a dock that, and these were just what's left of the pilings. Um, but yeah, just a, just an incredible morning. That little bit of mist still left over. Um, the mist was disappearing quite rapidly. The clouds were just w nice and wispy, but still kind of, you know, pointing back and forth through the, uh, where your eye was going. Uh, yeah, but just an absolutely lovely, uh, lovely way to, um, to, to spend a morning taking photos. And yeah, I basically remember the date, um, October 28th and especially the last couple of years, I've gone back and back and back, uh, just to see if I can, now that I have even better gear, uh, capture some of the magic and I can, um, again, I keep repeating that, but what's just interesting is that back then I had a kit lens, a $50 kit lens, which I was shooting at 18, the equivalent being of, a uh, roughly 27 millimeter. Um, I was shooting with a D300, which still was very good camera, but again, 12 megapixels, not the most enormous dynamic range. And that's why I was bracketing. I was doing a lot of bracketing just to see um, if I needed to put it together in HDR or just to see which which preferred, um, you know, spot I would I would enjoy, which, which was the preferred image. So uh, yeah, yeah, just um, pretty amazing how, you know, didn't matter that I didn't have the most perfect gear. What mattered was I had the most perfect morning. <laughs> you know, like the clouds were amazing. The mist was amazing. The reflections of the clouds in the water, perfect reflections of the cloud in the water. So it was both still enough so I could get reflections of the cloud in the river. It was misty enough so that it gave it this otherworldly effect. And back then, um, these these foreground objects, the, the, the abandoned uh, dock, uh, really added a lot to it as well. So there you go. Um, I think that's enough of me yabbing on. Um, hope, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode.